Welcome everyone to leveraging gamification and contact center solutions to drive agent engagement and performance. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. Elwood, you can begin your webinar. Thank you, Mandy. My name is Elwood Neuer and I'm Senior Vice President for Noble Systems. I'm responsible for the Solutions Engineering Team. We're responsible for everything technical during the sales cycle, as well as the liaison for customers and sales team and to the rest of the organization. I have about 30 years of experience in contact center technology, as well as IT and communications. But the reason why you're here is to meet the other two individuals. And I'll start off by introducing Brett Brasso, who's the VP of Noble Gamification Solution. He helps guide product vision, strategic sales for employee engagement platform. He is the founder and former CEO of PhytoTrack Gamification, which is now Noble Gamification. Brett oversaw the company's strategic direction, technology partnership, product development. Brett founded PhytoTrack to empower contact centers with the ability to leverage motivation across their employee generational spectrum with the ultimate goal of aligning employee activity and organizational goals. So he brings a lot of experience in the gamification. We're glad to have him as part of the Noble team. And I look forward to seeing the rest of his presentation in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and introduce Matt Coffey, who is the general manager of technical projects for Secure Merchant Solutions. Secure Merchant provides debt and credit processing services and support for businesses across the United States. Matt has over 10 years experience working with contact center industry. He has held leadership roles in sales, operations, technical projects, including gamification and speech analytics. And later on today, you're going to hear about exciting results from Noble Gamification. Before I turn it over to Brett, I do want to let you know that there's a chat application built within this webinar. We have lots of questions from folks that we're going to go over at the end. But during the presentation of this webinar, if you have any questions, please enter those questions in the chat window so we have those at the end. With that, take it away, Brett. Great. Thanks, Elwood. All right. So let's just kind of go over the agenda for today. Um, we're going to start out with kind of a quick survey um, and um, to kind of get a sense of where everyone's at with their gamification strategies and their organizations. Then we're going to go through and um, um, kind of talk about some of the challenges that, that organizations are facing as it relates to um, employee engagement. We're going to then talk further kind of really about the alignment between organizational objectives and agent activity and kind of how you get there um, in doing so um, in the process, trying to, trying to establish that equity across your employee base and disparity groups. Um, it, then we're gonna kind of follow up before we, we hand it over to Matt, um, how in fact you do hold your agents, your supervisors, your teams accountable um, with incenting behavior. So um, from there, I'll pass it over to Matt. We'll go through a little QA and then we will um, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so a little survey here we're going to launch. Um, which best describes your contact center's gamification strategy? A, utilizing a third-party solution. B, utilizing an in-house built solution. C, 100% manual. Or D, nothing at all. I'm going to go ahead and launch that survey right now. You should be able to see that. Um, and just go ahead and um, give it a few seconds here to have people respond, um, probably another 20 seconds. We'll close it and kind of see what the results are. We, we, um, we're at the um, NECCF yesterday and doing a presentation, doing so with Matt, and um, um, a lot of it, unsurprising, was 100% manual. So, okay, give it another five seconds. Three, two, one. see here. All right. It looks like, yep, 100% manual kind of falls in line with um, with uh, kind of the, the typically what we see. Um, so cool. Well, hopefully we're going to give you a lot of great stuff today um, to think about, take away. And um, with that being said, we'll get um, we'll get rolling here. Okay. So let's start out with um, just 
generally what is gamification and real textbook in the sense that software that applies game mechanics across the generational spectrum to motivate employees both intrinsically and extrinsically for the ultimate goal of aligning agent activity and company goals. And we're going to get into that in, in a minute. Now, let's see here. So basically, so why has gamification become such a vital component of, a, of the modern day call centers technology um, stack? Well, there has been this massive generational shift that has taken place in the workplace where millennial generation, it represents about half of the workplace. Um, by 2030, it's gonna be 75%. Um, so obviously continuing to grow, it, it does pose some, some challenges. So the repercussions of our employee base that, that is changing, um, where it's skewing heavy millennial, is, is really um, the challenges in and around the motivational um, requirements for this part of the generational spectrum. So what happens is, is that we have forever been able to motivate um, our workforce by essentially throwing you know, your money, your schedule, um, your tools, what you're gonna do to do the job at our employees. Now in this illustration here, this is really an adaption of Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, it re represented here in this employee hierarchy of needs. Now, what it's, what it's illustrating is that um, the employees of today require other motivational factors. And in this illustration, you can see level two, level three, level four. Those components um, are required in order to drive deep motivation for this part of the generational spectrum. But what happens is, and, and we, in large part, we do provide this, you know, in our work day, and it's disparated, right? It's pieces here, it's pieces there. But it's very difficult and challenging to implement um, these pieces. And it's even harder to be able to manage in the ongoing, you know, business processes of every day. So what happens is, is that we end up reverting back down to that real basic level. And when that happens, we come completely out of alignment with um, the bulk of our workforce. So, and, and those pieces end up generating um, a lot of the results that, that many of our clients and, and probably you experience today in your call center. So when we talk about those type of repercussions, um, the ultimately, you know, with the blooming levels of, of the disengaged employees that we just talked about, um, what happens is it generates a lot of these common pains um, across your operational spectrum. Turnover, um, it's everyone's vein. Um, second is, you know, absenteeism, which is challenging because ultimately, it's unplanned for, it's unaccounted for, it throws your operation into, into significant inefficiencies. And then just from the sheer lack of disengagement and 70% of employees report that, um, leaving a lot of opportunity monies left on the table and not being optimized. Okay, so as we start to kind of um, describe here how we're going to go about and establish that alignment of what you want as an organization, what you would like to achieve, and what your employees' activities um, are, and how we, how we actually end up doing that. So when we talk about what it is you want as an organization, whatever the, whatever the, um, the spectrum of, of business activity you have, you're going to have certain value points that you need to achieve. And really, where that intersection is optimized is where the agents, the supervisors, the teams, they're going along on their own parallel. And you as an organization, you are going on your own parallel. And, and the opportunity of excellence and where there's a real win-win scenario is where that intersection happens, where the employees are able to get what they like and you as an organization, you satisfy your objectives. So, the very first step in, in when we try to align employee activity and, and call center objectives is to really decide what it is that you as the call center would like to achieve. As an example, do you want to go after productivity type issues? Do you want to go after agent turnover, schedule adherence, um, or is quality and compliance a priority? From there, it's simply identifying which KPIs um, are the catalysts in achieving those desired outcomes. 
And those data points end up being the driver for any gamification platform. So in terms of generating and achieving that alignment, we're gonna go through and kind of look at different gamification examples and how you can do that. So once the organization has determined what their goals are, then it's a matter of establishing and communicating them to your employee base, right? So um, in these transparent goals, these goals will now be the driving force behind all the game mechanics that you leverage as an organization. Now, this is also the opportunity to kind of announce to your user base, your employees, your agents, your supervisors, what it is you value as an organization, what you would like them to achieve. Um, so in, in call centers, we know subjectivity is a killer. So this really is an, is an opportunity to remove any subject, subjectivity and dispel that notion of favoritism. Um, intuitive goals, kind of like this can also leverage uh, machine learning where you're able to take what you want, want to achieve through scorecards, through goals, um, and leverage past performance um, on data that's been achieved and overlay that with the game mechanic inside to be able to accelerate those outcomes. So one very powerful um, game mechanic is the competition mechanic. In fact, if you, uh, a CEB did a study that determined that competition is the number one motivator when it comes to igniting the drive in agents. Now, competition can come in different forms inside a gamification platform, right? You can have your agents versus agents, your team versus team. You can even do location versus location. In a lot of platforms, you can actually even create your own user groups, you know, top 20, bottom 20 versus middle 60. But there are some real critical critical factors when it comes to um, leveraging the, the platform to, to drive that alignment. Um, first and foremost is that you do not want to go just after the middle uh, top 20, right? Your floor is often divided top 20, middle 60, bottom 20. And to really um, give yourself the best chance to align those outcomes is to really go after that middle 60 because top 20 is already doing the deal. So middle 60, not only does it, does it, um, um, impact the, the finances in a positive way, but it also impacts the culture. And so being able to create equity across those groups is super important. The other piece is, is um, transparency. The power of transparency should not be underestimated. And, and obviously transparency inside of the gamification platform um, should be very prominent. We all know just simply when someone is watching, you tend to do better, you tend to perform better. Um, and then lastly, because a lot of organizations have very disparate groups, different groups, maybe different business lines, what's also important is to be able to normalize outcomes. So you can take disparate groups and leverage competition across groups, for example, you know, one sale an hour versus one sale every 10 hours. So like at, at Noble, what we do is we, we actually create ratios um, so you can appropriately award based upon those ratios so you can take groups that are across those disparate um, um, areas and go head to head. And what that does is that galvanizes people and uh, it makes them, again, you go back to that triangle of employee hierarchy of needs and that really um, satisfies their sense of belonging, that team, that belongingness. So rewards, rewards are important in the sense of, of kind of facilitating that alignment um, because you know, you, when you using the rewards game mechanic, can be very effective, um, not only in establishing a sense of worth, but also they have been, the, the agents or the supervisors, the teams, they have been out there crushing it. They've been doing the deal for you and achieving. So um, to be able to let them redeem those from time to time, can be important, um, not only just from the standpoint of, of making them feel special, but also when you do it in front of their peers. Um, and we'll get into that in a minute. But those points that they accrue, oftentimes in, in gamification platforms, um, need to have value. And it doesn't always need to be something like a TV or a headset or gift cards. A lot of times it can be, you know, dinner with the CEO, 
um, extra time off during the week, an extra break time, a parking space, you can leverage those type of rewards as well. And oftentimes they have more value than something a lot more traditional. And it's good to be able to leverage those as well because in the event your budget dries out and you don't have the budget for those um, other more glamorous prizes, you can still have value um, within the platform. Achievement and leveraging achievement. So utilizing the achievement me uh, mechanisms such as leveling, um, it really, is st what leveling does is it establishes status and um, the status can be tied to goal achievements. So when you, um, when you level up, you typically will earn a points, some sort of value system that will help align that particular person to a particular status and that status, um, like, like, in, like in most communities, will follow them wherever they go. So how, you know, how you, this can be used, like particularly to address an issue, a problem, let's just say turnover. Um, and this is kind of a specific example in and around aligning, um, is basically through, through a platform, you let your agents level quickly in the beginning. So over those first six, seven, eight levels of the onboarding process, like over those first 150 days where attrition can be the ugliest, and you let them level rapidly, they see themselves, their status changing. And what that does is that reminds them that, yes, you are having success. We as a company recognize that. And that is very motivating for someone to get that constant reassurance. And over time, as they get beyond that 150 days, beyond that, that, trouble point for attrition, those levels can level out and actually be stretched. So they turn into more stretch goals. Now, similarly, so, so badges are also great recognition pieces um, that can help drive alignment. Um, letting your agents earn badges, again, just like levels quickly in the beginning, um, going back to maybe a, um, a schedule adherence issue or maybe an absentee issue, you know, letting your agents that first badge that pops up seven days in a row on time to work, boom, they hit that. Next one that pops up 21 days in a row on time to work. And those can be spread across the KPI spectrum, right? And it, again, those KPIs are gonna be specific um, to your organizational needs. So behavior modification is not normally a one-off deal, right? In a call center, the coaching and training part is often uh, belabored by white fence issues, right? You're always painting the fence. So on the coaching component of your operation, as well as the training, you're able to accelerate the learning process. And the coaching and training becomes incredibly fun and engaging. And also a very effective way to incorporate both of these functions is to fluidly have them connected to your scorecards. So it's directly aligned to what you're achieving. And then inside of both the coaching, your coaching modules and your um, your learning modules, you overlay the game mechanics to ultimately accelerate those behavior outcomes um, that you're trying to achieve. So when we talk about recognition, recognition, um, particularly with the millennial generation, and this generation is actually the first official video game generation. And they're, they are entering the workplace with about 10,000 gaming hours. And that doesn't necessarily mean sitting in front of an Xbox for 10,000 hours. That includes being in contact with any kind of electronic gaming mechanic. Um, much of it, in fact, comes through like social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram. Now, with that, that has taught us one thing, and that is peer recognition is super important, being recognized in front of your peers. So what that does is, is that those recognition pieces and that transparency, it ultimately makes that particular person that you're rewarding with that, that um, type of recognition in front of their peers feel very special, right? Very proud, particularly in front of their peers. Conversely, it's also sending a message to the rest of the community what you value as an organization and what you're telling them is that we would like everybody to emulate this behavior outcome. And again, those outcomes are outcomes that you're trying to drive that alignment to. So when we talk about some of the critical characteristics 
benefits of utilizing gamification to align employee activity to call center goals. There's a few that, that I'd like to highlight. So the first is multiple interfaces, right? So it's important to make sure to include several interfaces that represent the different levels of responsibility in your organization throughout your call center. And if, because if the goal is really truly to improve behavior outcomes, then ensuring that you're getting comprehensive organizational commitment and engagement is super important. Although each user will have different um, functionality oftentimes, the whole point is, is, is to get beyond adoption, get beyond usage, and get that true engagement. And when you get engagement, like I mentioned before, not only it not only um, impacts um, the economics of your business, but it also changes the culture for the better. So, like I mentioned earlier, when we talk about the primary area of impact, most call centers divide their floors into kind of various segments. And for us, for this example, you're talking top 20, middle 60, and bottom 20. In the bottom 20, that's typically where you have your lowest level of engagement, right? And then you work your way up to the highest level of engagement to that top 20. So, just as a reiteration, the gamification platform really needs to facilitate your ability to go after that wide part of your call center floor, however you cut that up, because there is no sense in rewarding just the top producers. Um, you really need that functionality to be able to create equity across those disparity groups, across your floor skill level, so you can go ahead and affect that, that wide part of your, um, your community. Speed. So one of the things that um, is important is because for those of us who have run manual contests and use whiteboards, you know that many times those were just reactionary attempts to affect productivity issues or other behavior outcomes. So it always seemed, even to me running call centers, that just when you end up responding or addressing one issue, another one popped up. So giving your managers the ability to immediately respond, whether it's reactionary or in a proactive role to an issue to affect outcomes, that gives you such an important leg up when you go to try to drive that alignment to, at the end of a goal period, at the end of a quarter, because now you have the solutions to be able to affect outcomes, not within hours, not within minutes, within seconds. And not only does that help in terms of um, whatever the outcome you're trying to drive, productivity as an example, but also the efficiency at which your management's time is now um, being able to leverage. You're not having to spend hours and hours and hours on, um, on running a lot of these management type of activities like setting up contests or um, you know, writing on your whiteboard, cutting out shits, et cetera. You need that speed in order to really give yourself the opportunity to, to um, to create that alignment um, kind of today, not like yesterday. So for those organizations that kind of consist of multiple locations, whether it be either in-house or they're outsourced or there's a blend, with the goal of kind of true alignment between operational activity and organizational objectives, it's super important to have the ability not only to have the optics of all the activity that's happening, whether it be in-house or, or outsourced, um, and have that control over ensuring those vital KPIs are hitting the mark. But it's also the ability to kind of leverage or be empowered to leverage those game mechanics across those disparate groups through a unified platform so that you have the control if things are not going in the right direction. If you're gonna miss your um, objectives that you have the ability to say, it's time for me to pull the strings here because now um, the objective is the most important thing and you can do it in a most transparent way. And again, transparency certainly breeds productivity. So at this point, I would love to turn it over to Matt Coffey, who um, is um, a gamification client, and he has um, really been a power user and um, has had tremendous results. And I'd like to turn it over to Matt so he can um, kind of speak to the results that he has had um, using the platform. Matt? Thanks, Brett. Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you're enjoying the presentation so far. Um, as Brett said, we are a client, we are a user, and uh, 
the biggest thing that I could ever say about being inclined to user gamification is that uh, it has really started to create a, a huge community around a lot of the KPIs and a lot of the goals and focuses that the organization has, that, that community has then been created with inside of our company. So this is why we use it. And this is why it's become something important and valuable to us. And uh, that's why I'd love to talk to you about it. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, who we are first. I am not getting the next slide. There we go. I think we got it now. Thanks very much. Great. So um, secure. Um, we, we've grown a lot in the last 10 years. We started as a small startup in 2006. Uh, when I joined in 2011, we were about 100 employees roughly, um, and we've broken uh, 500 agents this March of this year. So we've grown pretty fast and uh, we've come a, become a big organization. Um, outbound calls is is kind of our uh, our base of operations. We talk to a lot of people. We make 120 to 150 thousand calls on a day. We also have an inbound customer service channel and uh, and many other as well. But uh, the base of how we gain our client uh, client base is uh, doing those outbound calls. So we've been a gamification client since November 2017, and uh, we have done some pretty interesting things with it so far. So what, what are our goals and, and, and what does gamification mean to secure and what are we looking for in general as an organization? So perfection. Perfection is a great thing to think about as an ideal, but that's what we always want to strive for. Um, and, and to us, that means unparalleled client support. So the first and most important thing I'll say about that, happy agents equal happy customers. And whether that's existing customers or potential customers, agents who feel engaged in a positive way about their work carry it through to every potential customer and existing client interaction that they'll have without that kind of engagement it's difficult as brad had managed before to really get top level engagement out of some of the bottom 20 or that mid 60 sometimes so integrity for our team and for our customers that starts with how the organization again interacts with inter agents and supervisors from day one so we pride ourselves on transparency and community. We think that's very, very important. And when our agents and supervisors feel that they're part of the community with transparency and integrity, those ideals are then passed on to our customers. So incentives uh, versus motivation. Uh, as, a, as a company, we have always been very big on incentives. We offer daily, weekly, and monthly commissions, uh, cash bonuses to our supervisors, sales, and customer service agents. Uh, that, that's always been an integral part of what we do. Um, but having those incentives is a very big motivation behind our agent performance. However, we found that not, not all agents or supervisors or employees are motivated to the same degree by the same incentives. To us, there's a huge difference between just incentivizing somebody or actually motivating them. Actually motivating somebody um, may come from a completely different place than just having the traditional monetary incentives. So what, what does gamification mean to secure merchants? Competition, competition, competition. That, that is in our DNA, that's part of what we do. One of secure merchants core values is that we are using competition, but then transparency on that competition, meaning that. So what does transparency on competition mean? Meaning that we can really make sure that it's evident to everybody across the organization what those goals and, and, and what the, the end game of that competition is. So this shows up not only through our business performance, but through our day-to-day -day culture. The environment actually lends itself to well-structured contests and quick engagement from our team members. So that's where a platform like Noble Gamification really can kind of tie those things together for us. 
we've learned we've actually leaned on noble gamification quite a lot to help us find better mechanics to launch and improve and build value through productivity increases so kind of like brett said before you know using something like a, a manual raffle mechanic is is one thing and and it may may be incentivizing to somebody but actually being able to tie those all, all of those mechanics into one place to, to execute and then gain value from it is something else. So no, noble gamification software has given us the ability to drive that transparency and that competition to a whole new level. We're able to do three times as much as we were before with game of, or with competition and gaming metric or gaming mechanics with half the effort. So there's, a lot to be said about compelling scorecards and leaderboards. And, and when Brett mentioned scorecards, these are more than just somebody getting an arbitrary score over something that they're doing or something that they're not doing. These are scorecards that are completely interactive, meaning that an agent can jump in and see where they are and compare them to the rest of the company, compare themselves to the rest of the company, compare themselves to the rest of their campaign and really understand where it is that they stand. So having that kind of visible motivation to say, well, I'm as good as everybody else actually has a lot more of an effect than just a manager or a supervisor sitting down with an agent and saying that they're not performing and that they need to perform. And that often be, can, can become an easy but traditional way to do things and not necessarily most effective. So, and then the next uh, biggest thing is prizes and recognition. So recognition is huge. When, when I say prizes and recognition, and what I, what I mean by that is if we have a traditional view of what we're going to give as a prize, something monetary, something, you know, $50 at the end of the day or at the end of the week, without recognition around that, sometimes it doesn't, have the, it doesn't carry the same weight and it certainly doesn't have the same value, not anymore, than it does with that recognition. So... The one line I really like to use is if a tree falls in the forest and it's not broadcast on YouTube, did it really exist at all? So it's, now we're starting to see a lot of our agents who were very much motivated by those traditional values or those traditional prizes actually being a lot more motivated by gaining those prizes and having recognition for it. So community and team spirit, and I think those two things tie in together. I, th I think recognition has its base built around community and team spirit. So getting recognition within your community means a lot more than getting recognition between nobody or somebody that you don't know. So when we're able to de deliver a platform that engages every single one of our agents into the same community, and give them that team spirit, whether it's a competitive team spirit or just some gentle encouragement through something, that in fact has such a more poignant effect than just ha handing somebody a traditional reward at the end of the day. So I think the, the one of the essential things that uh, would be really helpful for me to explain is where do we see these opportunities, right? So we recognize that we had the prospect to use telephony outputs that we already had, something that every contact center um, has as a, as a base of operations. And we, we leveraged a huge amount of data that we have already been passing through those outputs on interactions that our supervisors were having with our agents and our agents were having with our customers to gain actionable insight to engage and motivate our employees. And I mean actionable, this, it's not just insight that we think we see, we, we start to see a bit of a complete picture. So the initial driving factor was to improve alignment with KPI goals and agent activity for operational efficiency. That those things, aligning those things um, isn't always easy and it's not always evident how to do it. So when we realize the potential of what Noble has in their gamification platform, you can actually, what you can actually do across many different aspects, aspects of your call center, we've been able to get so many benefits and positive outcomes beyond what we intended in the beginning.
So lever leveraging centralized management activities with, with what the agent goals are to maximize our organizational effort, um, to use the time pushed uh, our organize or to use those those mechanics you pushed our organization beyond just adoption and beyond just taking something new which can be often difficult and it gave us a ton of usage to achieve true employee engagement and the operational efficiencies that we we're actually looking for so i mentioned a little before uh, rewards so through Noble, we've actually been able to properly track and report on um, the rewards and the contests that we're having. I don't know how many of you have actually sat there with a Sharpie marker and, and raffle tickets, but if you ever have 200 salespeople or customer service people in a room and you run a contest or a raffle and you have to write those names on a ticket, that becomes pretty inefficient in the beginning. So we can actually now not only make all of those things automated and in, with incredible ease um, we can set up entire months uh, or daily or weekly contests and raffles that are completely automatically launched announced to the agents then tracked and displayed on leaderboards and on the agent interface so all in a fraction of the time we were spending before all the management team uh, has centralized control and robust reporting on all of the contests and rewards. They're able to confidently deliver more rewards and a better experience for our agents while spending so much less time and less time worrying about the details of the management involved. So as the direction, we push the management to always deliver more and do more and do better it becomes a little bit of a push and pull for them to be able to do more, give better, and still get their job done. So currently we see that our managers are spending around half the amount of time managing and uh, administrating a rewards and incentives while being able to deliver two or three times as, uh, as many or even more engaging opportunities for agent supervisor rewards. Recognition. Again, th this is a theme that will come up with gamification. I think as Brett man mentioned, the, the generational aspect to the workforce uh, really qualifies that as an important thing to look at. And that's brought us to an entire new platform, but not just for the agents, but for supervisors as well. The supervisor interface is fantastic. It, it gives supervisors the same kind of competition mechanics between each other uh, with the management team or with other offices or centers um, to be able to really kind of push those goals and those KPIs. Um, we've always made efforts to do fun and interesting things to recognize our team, but the Noble platform has way more to offer than we ever could and things that we couldn't do that are now possible. Huge tournament brackets and, and like I said, like raffles that can go on for weeks and months without any manual input so one challenge we had with recognition before gamification making sure all the agents who deserve recognition on all levels not just on the final sale or the final retention and customer service but on all levels making sure they got it as much as possible now that we can leverage things like badges and rewards and leaderboard shout outs contest winners announced all around the company we've really started to see a tremendous increase in recognition and we're starting to see what that recognition has done for motivation. So leaderboards and agent dashboards, news feeds also recognize individual agents for reaching new personal best or achievements. Agents who get personalized recognition from the game can also have their supervisors management direction reach out to them and congratulate them in front of their peers, give them a, a online high five or a congrats. And let me tell you, that goes a long way. Community recognition like this has been such a positive motivating factor at Secure. I, I couldn't say more about it. So alignment, I, again, this is something that Brett taught, touched on a lot. Aligning KPI goals and targets all the way down from your direction to your management team, to your supervisors, to your agents is a pretty difficult thing. And for our organization, it was a big part of when we rolled out the initial groups of agents, I started seeing the, the training team asking every agent or every veteran who knew what their daily and weekly goals were. 
we we actually had a uh, forum for first day feedback from some of our first day agents that came in and started working for us and we found that only about 40 or 50 percent of those agents clearly and comprehensively knew or understood what their goals and targets were and on top of that 40 or 50 percent maybe only knew what one or two of those goals were so now our agents have their goals and their targets displayed in front of them they have every piece of information they need and in fact what you're looking at right now in front of you is not just some random snapshot this is what you would see at my call center when you logged in as an agent you would see exactly what your goal is for the the kpis that you need to hit on every uh, on a daily basis and and that alignment goes all the way up from the top to the bottom so we have our data going through noble's very very easy api it's updated in minutes, sometimes seconds, uh, to, to uh, put it on the short end. And agents and supervisors can uh, track their performance in real time. So there's easy to read dashboards. You can see right here, part of the agent dashboard, when they logged in, they're presented with this very clean, very simple dashboard. And it's multi-layered. You, you can customize it how you like. Um, and it clearly lays out their production goals for the day. So when you have those clearly displayed KPIs, so right here, there's three KPIs that this agent is focused on for daily production, transfers, leads, and lead conversion. And, and that for this position in our company is very important. Under each header, the agent can see their current production, their daily goal, and what has been, which has been set by the, the direction. So when we have uh, meetings on what we need to drive on or what we need to focus on, we can then translate that to every person in the company on a very easy, easily digestible format, right? Um, you'll, note, uh, you'll notice right beside current, there are two colors, um, two colored arrows, red indicating that the agent is not meeting expectations, green that they are um, on any particular KPI. And one of those visual representations can actually be more powerful than any other number that, uh, that you can present to an agent. So that has had a huge impact as well. So by utilizing leaderboards um, and, and, and stack scorecards like this, we're able to give, we, we, were, we saw and we provided a catalyst for agents and supervisors in driving the way that they performed through this kind of transparency. So we've always used basic leaderboards for our agents but there was never enough real visibility, depth, or real transparency to actually drive the agents and supervisors to act differently. So driving behavior means driving people to act differently, and that's not always e easy through ambiguous numbers. Um, when full vis visibility of goals and progress were made transparent throughout the community for both supervisors, agents, management, direction and above, the culture, the culture of engagement and interaction has started to really change. Instead of agents only having limited access to transparency of the goals, the targets, the agents were, the, the agents now have full visibility across the spectrum. Those KPIs that we determined to be the most important for them, this gives them the ability to self-monitor, but also motivates them to reach out to their supervisors and managers when they're not performing well, which is not something that always happens if things aren't transparent. Uh, agents and supervisors having that kind of access and, and ease of use has really motivated them and, and created a, a, a different atmosphere that way. So here, this, this, is, this is some of my favorite stuff about, about this, and this is something that is really drives energy around our company, um, is leveraging game mechanics and those KPIs uh, and the alignment that we've been talking about um, for what secures organizational goals were. So often having agents and supervisors being focused on the wrong KPI when you want to completely shift focus on the fly or add something new that we need to focus on, that's not always easy. And sometimes you don't wanna pull everybody off of the phone or stop progress or production to be able to do that. So what we do to do that is we use contests and we use duels and we use the gamification me mechanics that are so important. So the contest, they can be focused on anything you want. And in fact, as a, a direction level at the company, you can focus any contest or, or remove or limit any, uh, uh, 
parameters of what your contests are to make sure that your management team, your supervisor team are only pushing out contests on the KPIs that matter to you. So we set these kind of things up on the fly. We do two, three a day in each section of the sales center. So there are contests going on all over the place. Um, we do short term, we do long term, we do daily, weekly, monthly contests. We do them at the same time. We overlap things to try to push things in the, you know, vortex them in the right direction. Um, we have automated and scheduled this stuff to minimize management and admin hours. Uh, the amount of ma uh, management and admin hours that we've saved is impressive. There's agent versus agent, team versus team, campaign versus campaign, office versus office. There's a limit or an unlimited selection of which way you can go with all of these contests and all of these duels. So the duels are, are, have become incredibly important to us as well. And this requires little to no management effort at all. The duels in fact are initiated by agents. Uh, they go in and they can challenge anybody on their team or their campaign or in their office to whatever KPI you think is important for the organization. So if you, you think a certain KPI is important for the organization, you can make sure that that's the thing that the agents will duel themselves on. And let me tell you, the agents at our, our centers walk in every single morning and try to find somebody else on the, on the floor to make sure that they can compete with and challenge. So what, what all of that gives you then is an ability to deliver more rewards in forms of raffles or auctions or contests. Um, that, that will give your agents and your supervisors as well opportunities to reach out and gain something that they may not have gained before. So it, it really sparks interest and creates motivation. So we do a lot of rewards and incentives like this quite often. The spendable points. So this is something that when you reach those KPIs that we've set for, that organ for our organization, when you reach those KPIs, you then can gain virtual currency or spendable points. And winning that from reaching your daily goals and whether that calls made or uh, customers retained or sales made, whatever it is, you can then use those to, to buy into a raffle or to do auctions and that kind of stuff is so exciting on the floor. Um, we capitalize a ton of non-monetary rewards. As Brett mentioned before, this isn't always about spending, 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 in fact, we went from just spending, spending, spending to using a lot more of these rewards, these prestige or privileged rewards that in fact carry a lot more weight with them. I, we found now that if you put a, a bonus or a reward out for an agent to leave two hours early on a Friday, there's a lot of them that would like that or prefer that a lot more than a couple of dollars in their pocket. So productivity and efficiencies, what, let's, let's talk about what do we gain, right? What do we gain from this? So productivity and efficiencies is, is very important. So, you know, we're now achieving 200% more with 50% less. Our managers spend half the time creating and managing the bonus and the games and, and Brett asked in the poll, you know, how do we normally do this? And we did it before we did manual raffle tickets and we did uh, whiteboards and we, we had managers physically or supervisors physically record everything that was happening um, just to be able to deliver a, a basic level of engagement and competition between the agents. And now we're seeing that happen twice as much um, with more coaching, with more games, with more fun, with more prizes, more learning, more community and more production, all while needing a lot less to manage. The next, the next thing that's really important is higher quality, less rework, 1% error rate, accurate reporting, and very easy interfacing with whatever platform you're using already um, can, can really give you a sense of confidence. So when, when our admin team has to go and manage this software, it requires so much less than managing anything else. In fact, most of it's automated. So it, it's very reliable and it's less, it's less than 1% mistakes. And most of those mistakes are human error, yet those are minimized already just because of the ease of interface, right? So efficiency gains. So more than 1500 yearly management hours saved. And that's, that's easy to look at. If, you, if you've got an organization that was bonus centric already, 
well, then you can save on the amount of hours that you were putting forward for those, those games or those bonuses or those incentives. Yet, if you weren't that bonus centric before and you were really looking to become, then you're not going to spend those, those hours doing that as well. So the noble gamification interface has given our managers the ability to do track deliver more than they ever could before. That's allowed us for better, more fully engaged interactions with our management team uh, and our agents without adding to the management staffing costs. So there's been, a, there's been an increase in supervisor accountability and, and how the supervisors view their goals. And what we realized is that I think every one of our supervisors was always cognizant of what our overall goals were and, and what we were looking at the end of the week or the end of the month. But I don't know that every one of them knew what their individual goals were. So now the direction can set clearly defined goals for the management, the supervisors on daily, weekly, monthly uh, KPIs that are visible and transparent to everyone, to them. And in fact, your supervisors will get the same type of recognition and and they can you can award them the same type of rewards that you can to their agents which trust me makes them just as happy as happy agents so we've seen our supervisors achieving their goals 40 60 percent more than before and we realized it might be because they didn't know what they were without visibility and transparency so increase in motivation engage uh, in in employee success well engagement equals success. So new and exciting ways to engage and motivate employees because, uh, because employees are engaged at a much more comprehensive level from the first day they walk into the company, uh, we're seeing our new recruits develop their necessary, necessary skills for the job and hit their goals and adopt our culture much easier and much faster. So our first day exit surveys I mentioned before, less than half of our agents on the first day knew what their goals were. Now almost all of them do, and, that, and that's a huge difference. That makes a big difference in a lot of regions, and especially in success and retention. So include, improvement in client satisfaction. I, I said this before, and I mean it. Happier agents equal happier customers. Um, every day we're making our agents happier on the phone through gamification. The happier our agents are, the happier our customers are when we interact with them. When you walk through our call centers, you see smiling faces, no dark clouds. Uh, it, and it's really noble gamification was such a perfect booster to that happiness. We've always prided ourselves on, on that kind of culture. And now our, actually, our, our agents are actually happier when they're on the phone sometimes than off the phone. And, and that's a huge difference. So, Employee production, we, we've seen a ton of increases in, uh, you know, company-wide or individual employee production. And the one thing that we found with gamification, it really has become a huge part of what motivates our agents and makes their experience in our organization enjoyable. Um, we're seeing new agents hit their production goals faster when they start. Um, we're seeing our veteran agents push just a little bit harder to reach their targets. Um, motivated our agents to produce more and just to be happier in the first place, which they have to find themselves. With all of the gamification tool Noble has, um, it gives us confidence that we can boost performance whenever we need to do it and that our agents will respond and they're producing more of the right results for the right reasons. So since we've rolled this out, since we've rolled gamification out across the company, we've had supervisors and agents breaking production records almost weekly. So here's the fun part, um, hard and soft dollars, revenue lift. We have had three record breaking months already in 2018. Um, gamification has given us boosts in many different sectors across the company, has had a huge hand in our most successful year to date. Um, Secure has broken sales production records the last three months in a row. Uh, our direct interactions with our potential clients is what gains us revenue. So again, no happy agents, no happy clients. Sparking interest and boarding new customers is such a challenge. It's always a challenge for anybody uh, and quite a big one, but having happier and more engaged agents, uh, agents has really optimized those interactions. And when you can optimize those interactions with customers, that in turn has helped us save 
or, or helped us have three of the most profitable months in our history. So profitability increase, I, I really, I really focused around uh, some of those management hours saved. And to me, that's, that's certainly a costly part of any organization. And, and what you do is making sure that everybody is managed properly. And, and when your management team can either reduce the amount of time that they're spending or increase the amount that they deliver without increasing the amount of time that they spend, that makes a huge difference. So we're able to make our managers way more profitable, giving them the tool to manage more agents and deliver better engagement and less time with less effort. Our managers are profitable because they have more time and they spend more time making our agents better instead of filling in spreadsheets and running around with Sharpies and raffle tickets. The, in fact, the first goal that, that I was looking at with gamification came down to some of the employee retention. We were going through an expansion phase and, and we we're looking to get more agents on board. Um, and in the months before gamification, our employee retention rates were much lower than they had been in previous years. Uh, we, we normally were much higher. And in October of 20, uh, 2017, we had been as low as about 27, 30%. Um, shortly after gamification, we started to see better and better employee retention each month. We jumped up to 49% same month employee retention in January. And then in May, we actually reached up to 68%, which is better than we were before, uh, the, the year before and the season before, but also so much, um, it, it had given us such an improvement from where we had started before we adopted this program. So deployment cost and reduction, that becomes uh, incredibly important, uh, important uh, as well. Actually deploying something shouldn't cost you a lot. It shouldn't cost you a lot of time. It shouldn't cost you a lot of money. And for us to be able to save money after and during deploying this has been a huge thing. So if we can save a couple of dollars a week on each bonus or each incentive program that we roll out, we could save twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars in the first year in bonus spending just with the first two hundred and fifty agents that we had rolled this program out for. So the way in which we motivate our teams has changed. We're able to offer more motivation, more rewards, and that's helped us cut hard dollars in bonus spending, making intrinsic rewards part of our approach, and having just money and instead and having more than just money to motivate our agents to perform has resulted in a lot of savings, 20, uh, 10, 25% less bonus spending every month than we were doing before. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Brett. Uh, we've gotten lots of questions. So thank you participants for giving us your questions. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. So I want to let you know that first of all, we will be sending a follow-up email and answering every question we received. Secondly, we'll be sending emails out to everyone with a link to this recording of this webinar in about 48 hours. Probably by Monday at the latest, you'll receive that link. Um, it'll be up and running on the Noble website by Saturday. So I encourage you to point any of your friends or colleagues that are interested in this content, or if you want to review it again yourself, it'll be up on the Noble website probably by Saturday morning, and we'll get all the questions uh, answered to everyone. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for attending this Noble webinar. Have a great day.